Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and that is actually a special Christmas intro that I filmed and the audio is shit, so here we are. Little uh, behind the scenes look for you there. What am I talking about? Alright, happy Christmas. So in this old video we're gonna look at what incarnation happened. Incarnation. This happened on Christmas Eve. Shh. It's not the nicest story uh, this time of year and it has some real Bizarre trial footage, uh, but you know, tis the season, I guess. Without further ado, let's just get into it. Let's hit the brick. It was Christmas Eve 2007 in rural Carnation, a small town in the state of Washington. That afternoon, the Anderson family were planning a big get-together. They were gonna, you know, meet up, enjoy the festive season, make a big Christmas dinner, start wrapping presents. What you may be doing the very day this video comes out. Wayne Anderson, 60 years old, and Judy Anderson, 61, had been happily married for 31 years. Wayne was an engineer at Boeing, while Judy, she worked at the US Postal Service. They had three children. Mary, who I couldn't find a picture of, Scott and Michelle. They were all grown up. Michelle, she lived with her boyfriend of two years, Joseph McEnroe, in a trailer on the property owned by Judy and Wayne. Scott, he was married to Erica, and together they had two children, five-year-old Olivia and three-year-old Nathan. So, as I said that day, a big old family gathering was planned at Wayne and Judy's. Scott, Erica, and their two children, they'd be over. They were getting, you know, all in the festive mood, getting excited for presents and what Santa would bring the next day. And if the title of this video didn't give it away, spoiler alert, uh, they would all be ruthlessly murdered. Are you fucking serious? Michelle, Wayne and Judy's daughter, and her boyfriend Joseph McEnroe burst into the home, each with a handgun. Joseph distracted Judy at the back of the house, while Michelle confronted and then shot at her father, Wayne. Michelle's gun jammed, so Joseph burst in, shot Wayne in the head. And then he went back for Judy. They then proceeded to mop up the grandparents' blood with towels and rugs, and their bodies were dragged to a shed behind the house. So I told Michelle, I'm like, okay, what now? Okay, so it's like, this was your idea, you, your plan, but, but, what now? I only remember actually firing once. Apparently I fired twice. The second one hit her and, uh, sent her collapsing beside the, um, the fridge. Collapsing in front of the fridge, I remember what the last thing she said was, oh no! They then waited in the house for Scott, Erica, and their two children, who they knew were coming over later that day. And it gets worse. Sorry. Scott, Erica, Olivia, and Nathan arrived about an hour later. They entered the house ready to have a, have a grand old time with their family, until Michelle and Joseph appeared. They targeted the parents first, shooting Scott and Erica multiple times as they entered the living room. Erica said, and you know, she was looking at Michelle and was like, why are you doing this? And Michelle said, because you hate me, you always hated me. She was so, she was so angry. She was so furious. Erica survived long enough to crawl to a phone and dial 911, but as you'll hear, she didn't get a chance to say much. <laughs> Erica was then shot and killed. Joseph then apologized to the two children before executing them as well. Well, the way that it is, at least nobody suffered. At least. At least nobody suffered. Um, he did this because Michelle asked him to, um, because they didn't want witnesses, and they also didn't want the children to grow up having witnessed their parents' death. What discussion have you had? The discussion is that they were already corrupted, that the only, that what they've gone through, if they weren't corrupted already, they would be by this, and so the only decent thing to do would be the, 
if they weren't already corrupted already, then they would be by this. So the only decent thing to do would be to free them so that they wouldn't have to live through this torturous existence. When you say free them, you mean kill them, is that right, Yeah, kill them so that they could be so that they could be reborn again in a better life. The only context I recall it being the la Nathan and Olivia being put in was to make sure that they didn't that they wouldn't have a faith that was worse than death, right? What? Have a faith that was worse than death, right? The police were actually sent to the Anderson home after that uh, that old 911 call, but Michelle, having just an uh, inkling that the police may or may not show up, she locked the gate, you know, at the end of their uh, driveway, so when the police did arrive, locked gate, can't get in. You know, it's Christmas Eve, let's grab a beer, come on. It's Grant, don't worry about it. We'll, uh, we'll check on them later. They never did. And so it would be two days before... When Judy failed to show up to work on the 26th, a co-worker decided to pop by the house. Wasn't like Judy to just not show up to work. And so, Linda, Judy's best friend and her co-worker, she went over. The gate was still locked, so she did a much better job than the police by just walking around it and up to the front door. She knocked, but no one answered. She then opened the door and saw Scott Anderson lying on the floor. At first, she thought it might be carbon monoxide poisoning. She was getting ready to pull him outside when she saw he'd been shot in the head. Then she saw even more victims. She called 911. Uh, there's been a murder. There's three people dead that I can see right now. Inside? I just came up. She works with me. Inside the house? Yes. What do you see? There's a baby and a man and a woman, and she's my best friend. And over the phone, she told the operator a hunch she had. She knew Michelle Anderson was upset with her parents, but asking her to start paying rent for the mobile home she lived in on her parents' property. That hunch, and that kind of, not a big deal, paying rent, you know, when you're living on your parents' property, that was it. Not long after, the home was swarmed by police. But it wouldn't take long for this uh, mass shooting to, you know, uh, be solved. Because wouldn't you know it, while the police were there on that day, the 26th, who should rock up? But Joseph and Michelle, they drove up and were like, hey, what's, what's going on? Actually, uh, I take that back. When uh, Joseph and Michelle showed up, they didn't even ask that. They almost pretended to not notice the swarms of police. You see, Joseph and Michelle, they had a plan of how they were going to get away with this. It didn't go well. After the killings, Joseph and Michelle first drove north to Canada, then south to Oregon, ultimately arriving at neither. They clearly just couldn't make up their mind. They then decided to go back and, oh, brilliant plan, pretend to discover the bodies. Of course, no one would have suspected them if they uh, did that, but unfortunately for them, the police found them first. Unlucky shit look. And so the police, maybe they had just a few questions for Michelle and Joseph. As you do, Michelle told the police that they had been on their way to Las Vegas to get married, but when they got lost, they turned around and decided to come home. Hey, that would have been cool, getting married by Elvis. That's awesome. Oh wait, no, sorry. That never happened. She also said the last time she had even seen her parents was on Christmas Eve before they left to go to Las Vegas. Which makes sense, going to Las Vegas when you'd usually spend this with your family. But who knows. So then when the police asked, very simply, Why do you think we're here? What do you think is going on right now? Fucking duh, right? She broke down. When he asked you, do you have any idea why we're here right now? Do you recall your answer? No, I do not. Could you tell me what page it's on? It's on uh, page 60. Quote, I don't know. I really have no idea. Hold on a second. Yeah, okay. And, yeah, the whole massacre, it was all about money. Not even that much money. Allegedly, her brother Scott owed her $40,000 and wouldn't pay her back. And also her parents, they had begun pressing her about paying rent money for living in the mobile home on the property after she and Joseph had been living there for a year rent-free. She also believed she had been mistreated by her parents, beaten and sadistically abused. Or that's what she told Joseph, at least. And Joseph believed her, 
but there's no real uh, records of her parents being abusive people. And so she decided two weeks before Christmas, her family, they needed to go. She asked Joseph, her boyfriend, to help, and he obliged bizarrely. I would, I'd want to go off and run. I'm, oh, I, okay, I, I wanted to run. She's like, look, I'm not going to just let these people push me around and do whatever they feel like. I have to do this. I had to protect her. The best way to protect her was to go off and make sure that she was okay. I had to protect her, and it's to make sure that she would be safe. If that involved loading the guns, then yes, I loaded the guns. If that involved going with her, then yes, I went with her. If that involved doing these horrible things, yes, I did that too. Joseph and Michelle, they detailed everything to police. They didn't really hold much back. They even showed them, you know, where they had dumped the uh, handguns they'd used. On December 28, Michelle and Joseph were each charged with six counts of aggravated murder. Now, it would be a long time before this trial would begin. About eight years. More than six years after their loved ones were murdered on Christmas Eve, a family takes their frustration about a judge to the court of public opinion. They say the wait for justice has gone on long enough. King 5's Eric Wilkinson has the story. New at 5.30. It's not every day you see people protesting against a judge outside the King County Courthouse. But after more than six years, these folks are fed up. It's beyond ridiculous. Six members of the Anderson family were massacred on Christmas Eve 2007. Authorities say Michelle Anderson and her boyfriend Joe McEnroe initially confessed to the crimes, but the case has dragged on over technicalities, mostly surrounding the death penalty being sought by prosecutors. You see, in October 2008, the prosecutor announced he would be seeking the death penalty. However, four years later, the judge ruled the state cannot seek the death penalty. And the state governor, Jay Inslee, he had placed a moratorium on capital punishment. On September 5th, 2013, the Washington State Supreme Court overturned the judge's ruling regarding the death penalty and ordered that the trials of Michelle Anderson and Joseph McEnroe go ahead. All inclusive, meaning death penalty was on the cards. They were tried separately. You know what? Fuck it. If you want to kill me, go ahead. Kill me. I don't care. Okay? I'm trying to go off and lay out what actually happened. If that doesn't work for you, then that's cool. I don't care. You know? You're sitting here thinking, the only reason that I'm up here at all is to try and save my own skin. I don't care, okay? Shit. Anyway. Joseph's trial began first on January 20th. The prosecutor wanted the death penalty, while the defense argued that Joseph was mentally ill. I wasn't saying anything. It's okay. It's Boyd's function. As far as killing myself, as far as killing myself, I would have if I thought that would have helped. I thought that it would have just made things worse. They said he had been coerced into killing the family by Michelle. During the trial, Joseph was heavily medicated with anti-anxiety medication and antidepressants. He would laugh, cry, and, um, well, everything in between. Seeing everybody die remembering um, what I did, how worthless it is, how worthless I am because I killed all these people. They deserve to live a lot more than I did, but they can They deserve to live a lot more than I did, but they moved to Judy first. I put a bag over her head because I couldn't look at her. Because of see the emptiness where the, she should be. <laughs> so So I moved her out the back door. He claimed that Michelle had manipulated him, and that he felt he had no choice but to participate in the killings. It sounds so lame to sit here and not be able to at least go off and explain what I did, but I did do everything I could, everything that I could think of, and she was just, she was just get tired of listening to me just start snapping her fingers in my face, like, like, and I'm like, what are you doing, you know? until I stopped talking and then she's like, I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? And she's like, snapping my fingers in your, in your face like you're a dog so that, because I'm trying to train you, train you to listen, okay? She 
said she needed me and I believed her. The defense called a psychology professor, who said Joseph was a victim of folie de. Joseph's upbringing also became quite a part of the story. See, Sean Johnson, Joseph's mother, insisted she was a loving mother. Joseph and his aunt, eh, they disagreed. Allegedly, she beat him, verbally abused him, demanded that he keep things in order at home, and used him to manipulate her own parents for money. Now, this seems to be the basis for why he was manipulated into the murders, if he was. What's your definition of a lie? An untruth. Mr. Merrick, would you agree with me that you have a pretty strong motive? Is the twitch back? It's not really gone away. So... Well, let me ask you something, Mr. McElroy. It seems not to be as apparent for the jury is not in the room. Is there a reason why? Objections. Counsel's testifying. I will call a witness to that effect. I'll sustain the objection and move on. Mr. McElroy, let me ask you to do it this way. Do you have the twitch when the jury is not in the room? Probably not as much. And uh, is it because you're in stress now? This is a very stressful thing, yes. Also, about? when I'm coming up here, you know, it's when I'm anticipating to be coming up here, that is stressful. So, Mac, would you agree with me that perhaps one of the most stressful moments of your life was when you sat down in Detective Pavlovich's park? Yes. And you were interviewed by him? Yes. Nowhere in his notes does he ever note that you ever had a twitch, does he? So, Mac, would you agree with me that you have a pretty strong motive to lie to this jury? No. Well, you've lied throughout this case, have you not? Such as? Have you or have you not? There are some cases where I lied, yes. The reason I just wanted to briefly mention Joseph's upbringing was that for such a horrific crime, there wasn't really that much motive at all. I mean, I guess, you know, from birth he was kind of brought up in a uh, pretty volatile household, allegedly, we'll say. And that may have made him more easily manipulatable, is that a word? But to do what he did because he was easily manipulatable, is that a word? I don't know. It seems like those slights against Michelle that she, you know, was a victim of her own family might have all been in her head. And then Joseph, you know, not the smartest cookie, he was a victim of folie de. Michelle, she had no excuse. On March 25th, 2015, the jury found Joseph guilty on six counts of aggravated first-degree murder. In the end, eight jurors ruled in favor of sentencing Joseph to death, while four did not. So the death penalty was off the cards. On May 13th, 2015, Joseph was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Michelle's trial began about a year after Joseph's began, in January 2016. After witnessing the outcome of the previous trial, the prosecutor said he wouldn't seek the death penalty. So today I am announcing my decision to withdraw the notice of intent to seek the death penalty in the case of State versus Michelle Anderson. Ms. Anderson is charged with six counts of aggravated murder in the first degree for the mass slaying of her family on Christmas Eve 2007. Now, I initially filed the notice to seek the death penalty because the case, in my uh, opinion, met the legal standard. And I thought that the premeditated murder of six people, including two small children, uh, qualifies as one of the worst crimes we've ever had here in King County. On March 4, 2016, Michelle got the same as Joseph, convicted of six counts of aggravated murder in the first degree, and, just like Joseph, sentenced to life in prison with no parole. The motive, although, you know, dollar dollar bills, it's still pretty unclear, to me at least. I can't really wrap my head around this one. I mean, obviously, money is a huge motivator in, you know, crime after crime after crime, but to murder six people including two young children, for what didn't really amount to much. $40,000 and rent money. It's been said that they were victims of folly at duh. In fact, before the murders, it was said that they were really paranoid, really suspicious. You know, they were kind of like, um, what's that thing called when you, you get in a bunker and you stock up on cans of food and guns and stuff? What's that called again? Anyway, so it seems like there was some element of folly at duh where they were believing in each other's craziness. Joseph, it seems like he wasn't quite all there, but still, to do what he did, it's unforgivable. And that's the story of the Carnation Murders. Um, sorry to bring this uh, to you on Christmas Eve, but 
you know, just know that I love you. Thank you so, so much for watching. Merry Christmas or whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate. And a happy new year to you too. Though I'll be talking to you before 2020. Because, as always, I'll see you real soon in the next video. Thanks again. Merry Christmas. Mike out.